this is should we be talking about this? Yeah. I bet you guys thought you got rid of us. Yeah. But we're back. Episode 80. Big 80. Of should we be talking about this? A chance. I'm Rachel. Why are you pointing up to the sky? You know, gotta give love. Let's just jump into it this week because we made people wait a week and I've got 14 pages. Let's talk for a long time. No. I want to start with mine. Is that okay if I go first? Yeah. What yeah. was that huge inhale for? I don't know. I'm just ready for yours. Okay. I'm doing the death of Kendrick Johnson. Do you know this case just by the name? By the name, no. All right. It's a huge, highly covered case. Okay. And it's one I think you and I talked about when it was happening uh -huh. because the case seemed so strange. Yeah. What, when did this happen? In 2013. Okay. But it's a really controversial case. It has been determined to be an accidental death, but many people think it was a homicide with a huge cover-up. Okay. That being said, I'm going to do my best to try to cover it in an unbiased manner, except for there is so much hearsay. Yeah, as with any case. And so much circumstantial evidence uh -huh. that really pointed to a homicide. So I'm going to cover that as well, but I'm going to try to do the best I can in keeping them separate. The actual evidence versus the hearsay. Okay. So my sources are Valdosta Today, CNN, NBC, and all that's interesting, and of course Wikipedia. And a major source of mine was a documentary called Finding Kendrick Johnson, and it's on Stars. So it was January 10th, 2013 in Valdosta, Georgia. 17-year-old Kendrick Johnson didn't come home from school, which was really unusual for him. He was a senior at Lowndes County High School, and he usually came home every day on the school bus. And when he didn't show up, his mom was immediately worried. She even called the school bus driver who said that he never got on. Oh, shit. She got a direct number to the bus driver. I think it's a pretty small town. Okay. So, yeah. you know, small towns, you kind of know everybody. Yeah. His father, Kenneth, was a long-haul truck driver and had actually just left that day to go on a haul, a trip. I don't know. What a do you long call? haul? A long haul. So she calls him, and he said that he had spoken to Kendrick earlier that day, but hadn't heard from him since around 1 o'clock. Okay. And at this point, it's probably around 5. Oh, all right. So Jackie, Kendrick's mother, spent the next couple of hours just driving around the entire town looking for him. She went by the high school, by friends' houses parks, you know, normal places that maybe a teenager would be hanging out. Yeah. And found nothing. When night came, she decided to report him as missing. And of course, the police, he's 17. Yeah. So they do what all police officers do, and they just say, hey, wait, he could be out with friends. He's a teenager. Exactly. However, Jackie knew that this was not like the case. Him. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like you and I, our son, if our son didn't answer his phone or turn up or anything, we would immediately know that something is wrong. Right. So the police take a report and Jackie enlists all her family members to go out and continue to look for Kendrick. In the documentary, both Kenneth and Jackie, Kendrick's parents, said that when midnight came, they both knew he was dead. Oh, damn. I mean, that's how fucking certain they were that he would have reached out to them, or they would have found him by then. Wow. The next morning, Jackie and her daughter, Kendrick's sister, go up to the school as soon as it opens, like as soon as they could get in at 8 o'clock, and they're asking, hey, you know, could he be in the building? Can somebody look around, ask the other teachers if he made it to all the other class periods? You know, things like yeah. that. And as she's talking with the school counselor, the phone rings, and someone tells the counselor that a body has been found in the school's gym. Oh, shit. Obviously, Jackie and her daughter run to where the gym is, but they won't let them inside to see. She asks the school resource officer if it is Kendrick, and she replies, yes, Kendrick's body was found in the gym. So here's the shitty part. They don't let Jackie and her daughter into the gym to see Kendrick's body. Which I understand, but at the same time, they keep them out in a hallway. Uh -huh. And they don't even explain the circumstances around it or anything. So they are just sitting in this hallway, taking the word from some officer that her son is dead inside. Yeah, I'd want to see. Right. So to quote unquote identify the body, they bring out Kendrick's shoes. And his sister says, yeah, that's his shoes. That would make me believe that he's in a pretty bad state. Right. 
So after hours of asking what happened, they finally tell Jackie something fell on his head. But that's all. That's all they'll say. Damn. And like I said, she spends hours sitting outside this gym and police officers, paramedics, school officials, they're all going in and out and nobody's really telling her anything. If this was a crime scene, obviously it's fucked. Yeah. Because there are people... Everywhere. Exactly. And school has started, so people are now going up and down the halls trying to go into the gym. Oh, I mean, it's, shit. it's a clusterfuck. Eventually, they did put the school in lockdown, but the damage was already done. Well, the news of a body being found on a school campus got out pretty quickly, and Lowndes County Sheriff Chris Prine informed the media right away that it was a horrible accident and there appeared to be no foul play. In fact, he was quoted in saying... Although the exact cause of death is yet to be determined, as of this stage of the investigation, nothing has been discovered to indicate foul play was involved. So. Yeah. And it wasn't long until media actually started reporting the circumstances of the case before they had even been told to the family. Damn, I hate when that happens. I know. They were reporting that Kendrick Johnson had gone missing after third period Thursday, and Friday morning was discovered deceased in the high school gym inside of a rolled-up floor mat. The media also played an interview with an officer from the sheriff's office that was on the scene, and he said that the floor mats were rolled up, which create a circle and opening in the middle, you uh-huh. know, like with anything you roll up. Yeah, it looks like one of those Swiss cake rolls. Yeah. He told the news that it appeared that Kendrick had either fallen or crawled into the center and got stuck and died. He also said that the opening in the middle of the mats were about two feet wide. So these are big-ass floor mats. Yeah. So that was basically the timeline leading up to the discovery, according to the family. Now I'm going to recover what the actual police report said in the preliminary investigation. Okay. But before I do, I want to describe the gym mats a little bit more, just so people have a clear idea of what these things are and what they look like. So these gym mats are usually laid across the basketball court. Did you have gym mats at your school? Yeah. We did too, but we had the accordion kind. Yeah, you that's, know what I mean? that's what we had too. Yeah, well, these are big and they're I, either they're made of foam or like a rubbery, dense mm-hmm. foam. And it's just to protect the floor. They kind of like yoga mats, but like thicker. Yes. And bigger. Yes. Whenever they stand up, they're six feet tall. And that's how you store them. You roll them up and stand them up on their ends. Yes. You roll them up and then you put a tie in the center to keep it from unrolling. Okay. And then they would have these um, during the weekend when they would clean the floors or if there was a basketball game, they would roll these up or like during the holiday break, which is what they were just coming back from. Uh huh. They would store them in a corner of the gym, rolled up, standing on their end. So like I said, standing up, it's about six feet tall. And it's about two and a half feet in diameter. And the hole on the inside that he's talking about, the opening on the inside, it's around one to one and a half feet, depending on how tightly you roll it. Okay. Now, that's a, there's like 10 of these things. Yeah. And they stand up in a corner. So I'm sure that they took like an average. Yeah. And the corner where they put them is next to some bleachers. But it's not bleachers that you think of. They're really small bleachers. They're like three rows. Three steps high? Yes. Okay. So basically, if you were to stand on the third step, you could look down into Uh the rolled up mats. And they're saying he climbed up on top and crawled into them? Yes. Okay. So on January 11th, this was the day after Kendrick didn't come home, Mm -hmm. around 1030 a.m., a couple of students were standing on those small bleachers, and they could see inside one of the mats that was still standing up a pair of feet with socks on them. Mm. When they got closer to inspect to make sure that it was actually someone's feet they said that they could smell a terrible odor so they ran and got a teacher the teacher pulls the mat down so now it's on its side Uh and calls 911 and reports a dead body as more people come in they unroll the mat exposing kendrick's dead body inside so the initial investigation at this scene is very confusing because like i said a teacher had unrolled the mat yeah But then they rolled it back up. What? To take pictures of the scene. That's weird. Right. So when they're describing the scene, it's not necessarily what they saw. No, they they basically staged it off of what this first person saw. Yes. But they said that he was found upside down in the center of a rolled up mat and his arms were above his head. Above his head, 
since he's upside down, so like at his waist, or reaching down towards the ground? Reaching down towards the ground. So if the mat is standing up, it's like he dove in with his hands over his head, and his hands were closer to the ground past his head. And like I said, they measured the mat being six feet tall standing up, and Kendrick was 5'10". So his feet were just right below the surface of the rolled up mat. Uh Uh-huh. They also measured his shoulders, and they were 19 inches wide, and the center of the hole, whenever it was re-rolled up, was 14 inches. Mm. Below him, in the hole, was a black shoe that was clean. There was no blood, nothing on it. But underneath that black shoe was a pool of blood and vomit. At the top of the mat were the white tennis shoes that he had been wearing that day, loose inside of the hole. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, not on his feet. Right. After speaking with teachers and students, police discovered that it was pretty common for students to hide belongings in the gym. Apparently, there you had to pay to use a gym locker. Oh. And there were a lot of students that would share tennis shoes. Uh Uh-huh. So they would oftentimes find places in the gym to hide the shoes so the next person could go use them. Yeah. And a lot of the times, they would hide them in these gym mats. In fact, it was really common for them to just throw their shoes inside the middle of the rolled-up gym mats from the top. Okay. So how would these other kids get them? So in the documentary, they asked kids that exact question. How did you get them? And every one of them said you would just tilt the mat over and grab the shoes from underneath. Yeah, that makes total sense. Not one person said you would try to go in from the top. However, with this information, the police seeing the black tennis shoe underneath and the white tennis shoes on top, uh, they came to the conclusion that Kendrick had went down headfirst into the mat to retrieve the black shoes that were at the bottom and died from being stuck upside down. That sucks. And everything that I just said, including them unrolling the mat and re-rolling the mat, that is not disputed. That is written in the police report. Mm -hmm. That's not hearsay. So they unrolled the mat and then rolled it back up. I think the teacher unrolled the mat to see if the stu- if he could administer aid. To, uh, yeah, absolutely. To the That's the first inside. thing I would do. Right. Uh, but then rolled it back up and then stood it back up over the shoes that were there. I don't think they stood it back up. They rolled it back up to take pictures of how he was found, oh, and according to the teacher. Stuff. Yeah. And then they knew from where it had been tilted because the blood and the vomit. Gotcha. They had yeah. After Kendrick's body was removed from the school, his parents contacted the police and demanded that it not be taken anywhere until they could actually see him and positively identify him. Yeah, because they haven't they haven't seen, seen him at him all. Yet. They they don't even know at this point what happened. Oh. They just know that something fell on his head and he died in the gym. So when they're finally allowed to see Kendrick's body in the morgue, Kenneth, his father, noticed that the room was exceptionally hot, and obviously a morgue is supposed to be cold. He even said that when his body was slid out from the cabinet or the locker, that a gust of hot air hit him. Mm. He said that Kendrick's face was swollen and had dried blood coming from his nose and mouth, and dried vomit was all over his arms, because remember, his arms were... Up above his head. Right. So Kenneth said he thought he looked like he had been in a fight because he was so swollen in the face, but if a person is upside down for that long, I think it's pretty common for their face to be that swollen and start bleeding. Right. Probably discolored. The coroner ruled his cause of death to be positional asphyxia, which is dying from being upside down, or in a position that allows you not to breathe. Did you know there's a lot of people who pass out drunk and die from positional asphyxia? Really? Yeah, like they slide half their body off the bed, like while they're passed out. And they're just out. halfway upside down. Uh-huh. Ugh. Do you know what really kills you from being upside down for too long? Is it blood pressure in your brain? Sort of. This is just a trigger warning. I'm going to talk in graphic detail what happens to the body when you're upside down for too long. So skip like 30 seconds if you don't want to hear it. So there's several things that happen all at once. The first thing is that your lungs are slowly being compacted under the weight of your other organs. Okay. So it's a lot like how people suffocate in quicksand, or not just quicksand, any sand, Uh because you take a deep breath, and your lungs expand out when you breathe in, and then as you breathe out, your lungs, they decompress, and the sand fills that area. So each time you breathe in, you can't expand as far as as you did before. Well, that's what's happening, but with your organs. Your organs are pressing on your lungs, so your lungs eventually can't expand enough to get any oxygen to you. And they're not strong enough just to push them out of the way, I guess. Right. 
And at the same time, your lungs are also filling with fluid, which can cause you to asphyxiate on its own. 